days than I do fat loss. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Wrong. I'm not totally not talking about fat loss. I still love it, but yeah. yeah, I just get more of a buzz about talking about business, you know? Yeah. So did you, did you work with Pure Gym in the past or do you still, where do you, what do you still do? Work. Still yeah, work. Still work there. You're still there. Okay. Yeah. Cause that, that's what I wasn't sure about. I wasn't sure if you're, you were still based at Pure, if you had kind of maybe moved on, but where, which one are you at? Uh, the Pure Gym on Bath Street. Okay. Glasgow. Nice. Yeah. So nice. So you know, you must know Chris, eh? Chris Davidson. All right. Quite well. Yeah. 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 Uh, he, I used to work in the same gym as him. So oh, did, really? Uh, yeah, man. I'm just going to, sorry, just try to change these camera settings, man. It's no, weird. no, it's all good. It's all good, man. Um, how's, the, how's the whole ISO life been treating you? Mate, it's good. It's good. Mm. Uh, I kind of grumble, to be honest. Uh, we're yeah. probably best saving it, saving it for the podcast and I can yeah, go yeah, right yeah, yeah, no, no worries, bro. I'm, I'm rec- I always start recording as soon as you come on anyways, just for shits. Oh, do you? Yeah. Because right. um, one, one of my buddies is like, the best chat is always at the beginning, Dan. You always got to start. You always got to start. So, uh, but yeah. listen, mate, I know, I know time is money for you and you're, you're quite busy. So first off, mate, thanks uh, for taking the time. Appreciate it. So welcome to the Fitness Burrito Podcast. I think this is going to be episode eight or nine. Uh, so um, I'm pretty lucky to have uh, a really good coach, a guy called Chris Bradley. Uh, Scott's who's killing it right now by the looks of it. Been killing it for a while. Really good transformation specialist. Uh, from what you were saying earlier, I think he's, he's kind of starting to dive in a little bit more into the business side. Um, so yeah, pretty pumped about this one. Uh, you were kind of one of the guys I want to get on. A few people recommended I get you on. Uh, so Chris, I'll let you introduce yourself a bit and tell the people kind of obviously where you're from, your background, you don't have to go crazy detail, but feel free to go as much as you want. Yeah, mate. Awesome. First of all, thanks for having me on, bud. Uh, hopefully between my accent uh, and your voiceover voice, um, (laughs) we should be, we should be good. You should, your voiceover voice should counteract my accent. Uh, I I think I may need to speak to you about uh, doing a voiceover on my podcast because you've got one of those voices. It's like, it's like a voiceover, you know? You know what? I'll take Uh, that. I'll take that. If that's my wins, if that's my small wins in life, I'll take it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yep. As uh, Banty said, just um, transformation specialist. I mean, I, I do avoid the specialist word because it gets thrown okay. around a lot. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's that's kind of how I set my business up. Um, I have been a personal trainer, online coach for five and a half years now. So working in Pure Gym, uh, still work there in the same gym. Uh, I gave up a sort of like full-time job. I used to work in Sainsbury's and Ladbrokes okay. and those kind of jobs that at the time I just fell out of school fell into um, and yeah. made half decent money ton of overtime paid yeah. for holidays you know no real focus in, uh, in the good life, stuff but the good stuff yeah 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 so and then uh you know i tried to do my personal training course when i was 18 it fell through because i was busy um drinking bevying you know uh, and just yeah. again like i said just just wanted to be young yeah um so that fell through and then i'm thankful for that because i might not be here today um mm. because it might have just went horribly wrong then after that, just um, working those those jobs, um, did my PT course, and mm-hmm. you know got the job in Pure Gym, and it was a case of right, how do I go from, you know, still working part time in those jobs that I hate to yeah. doing something that I now I'm starting to love, um, and I made that transition, um, albeit a scary one, a big step. I know there's a lot of people who may be listening, um, certainly from the Pure Gym ranks that. Or maybe even thinking about making that step. Um, it's completely understandable that you you have a part time job on when you're starting up a business. Yeah, big but time. But you've got to know you've got to know when to let go. Um, because I feel that sometimes you feel in a bit of a safety net. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't fully focus on your business by having that secondary job there. So yeah, my advice to anybody listening would be just go for it. Um, you know, work hard and do do something you love. Because mm. I did it for too long, and you know, it almost broke me. Uh, yeah. Just for the hours and the added the added time. Um, so yeah, then you know, long story short, that's kind of where I was at. Um, eventually, just getting busy through through sort of gym classes, speaking to people on the gym floor, and um, growing my social media, which did take a long, long time. Hmm. How long uh, did it take you, now, Chris? Just curious. How long did it take you? I would say a good solid two and a half years of posting every other day. Cool. Um, you and know, I think five years of it. Sorry, mate. I just think uh, just on that, I think it's important to mention that because everything, it, you know this, right? It's just like clients, like everybody wants stuff now and you're always trying to find out, you know, how can I get to a thousand to two thousand, three thousand? And I think a lot of people feel like followers equal success when a lot of times it doesn't. 
Uh, but it just goes to show you, Chris Prop. I mean, I think you, I checked when I sent you a message earlier because I thought I screwed up and didn't send you the fucking Zoom link. Uh, but I remember looking, I was like, you know, you're, you're almost about 7,000, but I would say those are probably pretty organic, eh? Would you say? Yeah, mate, very, very organic. I mean, mm. you know, without blowing my own trumpet, the reason that I post every other day is that I keep my audience warm. So I make them get, I give as much stuff for possible as for free in my yeah. content. You know, yeah. you, you see the way, you, you know, yours, especially now repurposing your podcast, you're getting videos of it. Mm. Anytime I do something in the business, I'm thinking, how can I repurpose this for content? Yep. You know, whether it be a client sending me a message, could I screenshot that, add it to an album of good feedback, you know, roll that out over the week, 100%. you know, things like that. So yeah, mate, genuinely a good example is when you look at some influencers, Hmm. who have 100k plus yeah and yet you look at guys in our industry for example phil graham you know people like him who have got 40k followers yeah who's training people with six seven figure businesses yeah you know we're not all talking about money here but when you think of likes versus money we know who's a, we know who's more financially better off yeah and that's what i hope anybody listening uh, you know any personal trainers or you know business owners that it's exactly like Alabanti said there. It's it's all about you know how the customer feels, what they get from you. It's not about likes because, and I'm sure you'll agree at this current time, mate. There's a lot of eyes and a lot of ears about, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean more likes and more comments. If anything, mm. it's harder because it's busier. You know, you probably noticed as well when you bung up a post during lockdown, it's not getting as much traction. I mean, yeah, it might be getting seen, but yeah. it's definitely not getting enough traction. And one of the biggest things that I, I did was stop checking my likes you know i don't know about you but my first year of posting i would put a post up and then the next 20 25 minutes i'd just yeah. have to refresh my likes yeah you know because remember that thing where you used to hope it would get to 11 so that it would be double figures and it wouldn't yeah. be names anymore <laughs> yeah. that's funny yeah so mate that's where i was at and i'm sure a lot of people listening were the same and now it's just a case of i don't even check it i put the post up Mm. I'll go back in a couple of hours, see any comments, reply to comments, because at the end of the day, that's people on your page uh, contacting you and relating to you. I mean, mm. I would rather somebody commenting on my post saying, spot on, mate, or oh, this is so me. Those words yeah. are golden in a business. Because yeah. you know you're relating. Exactly. 100%, mate. I would much rather that than triple figure likes, because like you say, mate, take food pics, for example. You know, mm. you take food pictures or food pages, they go crazy big on Instagram because mm. everybody loves food. Yeah. So everybody yeah. loves it. You know, you don't look at it and go a transformation and go, mm, I'm jealous or oh, that's made me annoyed and you swipe away. With food, you just go, love it. Everyone does. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's so, a good point. Hence the name of this podcast as well. You know? Yeah. You know um, what? I just, I kind of just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go against the grain a little bit, make something a little bit catchy, a little bit. I don't know. Just thought it'd be different and see if it catches on. Cause I mean, if you tell somebody like, Oh, what's your podcast name? And it's like, I think yours is cool. Cause you're the Glasgow PT. Like even before I'd say even like two, three weeks ago, I was like, fuck, what's that guy's name? I was like, I don't even know your name yet. I was like, I just refer to you as a Glasgow PT cause you're branding spot on. You know what I mean? I'll, and I was like, yeah. yeah. And I was just like, so if people go, Oh, what's Dan's podcast? And I go the fitness burrito, they're going to be like, fuck, what a shit name. But I'll remember it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, mate. But I feel you could play on that because a yeah. burrito's wrapped in layers, isn't it? And you don't know exactly. what's underneath. That was the point. That was the point. And we yeah. always kind of said, like, I just can't do it now. But and I know we're going on a tangent, but I think it's still good info. Um, but the the whole point was like, you know, if ever you came over, I went over to yours. I would always bring like a fucking burrito because I'd be like, well, you know, are you veggie? Are you vegan? Or whatever. Just like to have a bit of a fun with it. Uh, but obviously, can't do that now. But yeah, mate. So I think those were really kind of cool bits that you mentioned. So I guess. When did you decide to make the jump just for your, to, to finish off your intro, when did you decide to make the jump from in club PT to online or did you kind of do it all at once? So I am, um, I decided I was far too busy as a personal trainer on the gym floor. Mm -hmm. uh, I started to notice my standard slip because I was doing far too many hours. Um, and yeah, yeah. you know, I was, I was just wanting to make as much of an impact as possible. So I took a lot of people on and ran myself into the ground a wee bit. Mm -hmm. What I started to notice was, you know, my 7 a.m. client wasn't getting the same service as my 6.30 p.m. client. You know, I'm yeah. sure you mentioned this stuff to your mentor clients in, in Pure Gym. But, mm. yeah, I, I started noticing myself leaning. And, you know, coming from Sainsbury's background, that customer service is key, mate, at the end of the day. And, yep. you know, appearance is key. So I started to realize that. And I thought, right, you know, that needs to get sorted. Um, I also noticed, mate, that my business was a bit 
you know, all over the shop. There was no mm. structure to it. I was letting people in the door. Um, you know, I was messaging them a lot, you know, to give them value. And really, I could have done a lot of, you know, automation, a lot of systems in place. Yeah. Taught the client how to be more sufficient themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know about yourself, but you, when you start a business, especially personal training, it's like your baby. So you're holding on for dear life and yeah. to give it as much as possible. And yeah. really, it's like, go and let it, you know, fall a wee bit and get stronger and pick itself back up. It's the mm-hmm. same with your PT business. So, uh, yeah, me, I made the jump two years ago um, to go on rent. So for MD listening, that's just basically, you know, renting out the pure gym to work in it. You still yep. wear the uniform, still part of the team and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and made, best decision ever made, again, you know, it's a similar jump, making it from if you're employed to half, you know, doing PT in the side as well. Yeah, I made that jump, you know, best thing I ever did, mate. Best thing I ever did. Um, when you look at it, it seems like a lot of money, um, but you make that back in no time. 100%. You're then, you're then, you know, I come in the door for, what do I work now? Monday to Friday. Um, six to twelve, I mm-hmm. work. So that's my that's my schedule. I'm able to choose that now. Um, two years ago, I went and rent, and I was able to just offer a much better service. You know, six clients a day instead of nine or ten. Because yeah. I think when when you're younger in the PT game, you think it's cool to do forty five hours. Yeah. When you actually, do, yeah. you know, yeah, mate. But actually, it's going to crumble from underneath. There's mm. just no doubt. You no way you can keep a high level of standard all the way um, so yeah mate that's when I made the jump um, like never looked back since I would always highly recommend it um, I'm just able to offer a much better service scale my business and now I've took a lot of it online yeah. uh, I've dabbled in and out mate I, I do feel with the online I don't want to become a desk job sitting at a laptop all day hmm. um, it does become a bit of that the more you get 20, 30, 40 online clients yeah. so I have dabbled in helping personal trainers and you know, grow their businesses and give them advice because, like I say, it does put a bit of fire in my belly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in the last two weeks, mate, I'm grateful for lockdown because I've been able to work in so many systems away from my business, but in my, like, not in my business, but out on my business. So, yeah. for example, instead of being on the gym floor eight hours, six hours, I'm now doing all the stuff in the back end that are going to value the customer. And the client. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, mate, that's when I made the jump and I don't, I've not looked back since. Yeah, that's class, man. I think that's really good. And, um, you know, for anybody who's listening, maybe to this podcast for the first time, like a lot of this podcast will probably dip in and out of, you know, talking about what coaches do at times and personal trainers. But a lot of it is just, especially today is going to be kind of info that people can hopefully apply practically. And that probably will apply to, you know, the average Joe at home and they'll probably apply to PTs and coaches. Um, but yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, I'm still, I'm still with pure gym full time and I still kind of think about it like, you know, am I going to go back full PT? And it's kind of on my mind these days because I'm falling in love with the processes again. So I've had the time to, uh, when I first started, I was kind of similar to you, like business blew up probably just cause I was Canadian and people were like, Oh, that guy sounds all right. Um, but then yeah, my service was shit and I came back from a big customer service background too. And then I think I ended up falling into management and obviously still enjoyed it, but yeah. If I could go all the way back, like we all say, don't you? If I could go back, I'd do it all over again. I'd structure my time and the rest. Uh, but yeah, cool story, man. That's awesome. Killing it. Good work. So uh, I sent you a few of these questions over uh, and I thought it'd be cool to kind of, you know, dabble into a few. So the first one, I kind of always ask the guys, I think it gives good insight to people listening, coaches, consumers alike. So what's your training and nutrition been like, mate, with everything kind of happening? Um, and are you finding kind of, are you finding structure and just your routine? Is that difficult? Has that been easy? Like, how's that been for you in general? Well, mate, I had planned um, to to start dieting um, because, you know, the Sunday of the first lockdown, mm-hmm. I had planned to diet because uh, it was 12 weeks to my holiday. Okay. Uh, I'm, st- I'm still pretty hopeful that I'll go on that holiday. Where so, are you going? Where are yeah, you going? Mate, uh, it's a villa in Lanzarote, not major, just for the family. But you know, nice. after all this, it's going to be yeah, just yeah. a villa of happiness, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, me, I had just um, I had set out to diet. Um, don't get me wrong, I did that. I started the week after mm-hmm. uh, because let's just say for everyone it was a bit of a buffer week. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, me, I started dieting the week after the week after. So two weeks now, I've been dieting. Um, cool. And mate, the reason, the reason, couple of reasons. Main reason was like a lot of people pre-diet a pre-planned diet they go a bit crazy uh, and yeah. they have a bit of a blowout and that's what I had done and to be honest mate I was coming into a real it was post January February March I was coming at a real peak of business and I let my training go you know yeah. my training was all over the shop uh, I was not weight training enough 
Um, so I had that in my mind. And me, I felt shit. I felt horrible, you mm. know, because I had let it slip for so long. Uh, as a business owner, it was really difficult to try and find that balance. Yeah. Um, and even though, like I said previously, I have cut my hours down, I still do too far too many. Yeah. So now I've been able to be at home and adapt. And mate, to be honest, you know, apart from the crazy spell at the start where you couldn't get food, it's all mm. back to normal now. Yeah, it so is. I've made it really this is. Point, yeah, it's back to normal, mate. So my, my biggest, you know, when I weighed it up and I went, right, I feel like shit, but there's a global pandemic going on, right? So, <laughs> you know, and it's like each finger's getting, you know, counting up the, the, the pros and cons of this situation. And, mate, the pros won because simply I felt rubbish. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't be able to deadlift and squat and do my normal compound lifts and stuff. Yeah. But, mate, I've, I, I do hit classes with my, with my, with my team uh, five times a week. Nice. You know, I've got a, a sort of timetable all set for them. And I went, you know what? I don't normally do it, but it's going to burn some calories. So you guarantee I'm going to implement this and this will be my cardio. Got yeah. a barbell, got a couple of plates. I'll make do with it as it is. So yeah, mate, the first week was a bit of a buffer week. And then full steam ahead now, I'm checking in with myself. Uh, take my measurements, take my weight, to look at pictures. Primarily is my biggest metric. Um, I'm structuring my day around the metafit. So, for example, woke up today, didn't have one at 7 a.m., had one at 12. Okay. Um, and for, for any PTs listening to this or anyone listening to this, just having that time locked in on your day. You know, I showed up today on the Zoom call, 20, 20 of my clients just sitting waiting, ready to rock. And that motivates me. And see, yeah. when I finish that, it gave me a sense of accomplishment, mate, because normally when you finish a day of PT and you go, right, I've did my job. Yeah. Whereas I did the metafit, came off the back sweating quick shower, get ready for a podcast. And in all honesty, mate, I've been able to network with people like yourself, mm. um, which I, we, we probably wouldn't have got this going today if it hadn't been yeah, for it's the true. fact that we arrange it. So yeah, but yeah, mate, that's, that's me. I'm, I'm, my structure's ready and sorted. I build it around my clients because I have a lot of time in my hands. Yeah, I'm making a lot more homemade meals, mate. I love making food. How no crazy is that it. though? How crazy is it? Exactly, man. Exactly. So, yeah, mate, I'm making homemade meals. I've got a ton of time to make food. So, you know, most Chineses and chippies are closed, which is great for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, mate, yeah, apart from, you know, filling up the muscles with a bit more blood flow and volume, mm. everything else is in place for me. So, for me right now, this is a good time to diet. Cool. And I guess it all depends on your circumstance. Yeah. You mentioned one thing. I just thought I'd revisit it. You said about pictures. You say you revisit pictures daily. Is that what you said? No, no, mate. No, no. That's just one of the metrics. So I'll, I'll check in on myself weekly. And oh, then okay, pictures, yeah. pictures is one of them. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I've actually, I've literally just started to do the same thing. So I started last week and I thought, I, I thought to myself, you know what? I haven't hardcore dieted in a long time. And I thought, you know what? I've got the time. I'm cooking meals. Like to your point, I was, we were just joking yesterday. My missus and a, a roommate who stays with us is another PT, just like how well we're eating and how much we're enjoying cooking because you don't have the time. And like when you're on the go, as you are, you just like, you just grab whatever chicken, lean meat, veg, rice, and then that's it. It's pretty basic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I think exactly. you, I think we kind of take, we probably took that for granted before. Um, and now we're kind of appreciating the little things. And hopefully this whole ISO is going to help people kind of just appreciate the little things a bit more. Uh, yeah. Cool. I like that. I like that. So big, big plans, hopefully for, uh, for the holiday. Hopefully that's a go. Um, fingers crossed for you, mate. I was supposed to go to France in July, but we've we've sacked that off. Whole family thing, so we're pretty gutted because my parents are still in Canada, um, and they're just like, I don't think it's gonna happen. So we're all big gutted. But next year, next year. Can you speak um, French? Yeah, that's my first language. Oh, nice man. Yeah, that's my first language. People. Another What's that? Another string to your bow there, big man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always think, you know what, should I maybe tap the French market, but you don't speak it much over here. It's surprising though. There's a lot of people at Puritan that speak French and you know, they kind of look at you funny when you start speaking and like, are you just, you know, yeah. are you pulling my leg here? I'm like, no, no, I can speak French. And then, yeah, it's good. Um, nice, so moving on to the next one, man, because I think this is a good one. And I noticed you put a lot more probably content geared towards like mindset, journaling things like that in the recent few months which i thought is really good so i guess what are some of the methods or top tips to kind of help people stay motivated at home at the moment um, it's something we've i spoke to a few with a few coaches recently on podcasts about like how your environment's not changing that might affect your mindset so i guess what are some of your methods that you're using i guess if you want to share those i guess method that 
Yeah, mate, of course. Uh, one of the biggest methods I've used for, you know, this will apply mostly to, well, I mean, if you're stuck at home, not working, then you're stuck at home. Yeah. But for the majority, they're stuck at home working from home. Mm. So one of the biggest, the biggest tricks that I've used, mate, and it's so simple, is I don't eat where I work. I don't drink where I work, unless mm-hmm. it's a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, I, I don't sit for any longer than an hour working. Um, That's a good I one. Change, That's a big one, I think. I change clothes as well. Um, okay. Not all day through the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But every hour. When, yeah, when, yeah uh, every podcast. I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, you know, you know, I, I, like if you were, I mean, you want to be comfortable at home, right? There's no mm. doubt about it. You want to be comfortable. But what you don't want to be doing is sitting at 12 o'clock in your jammies. You yeah. know, you, you, you want to be, I'm not saying wear a dress pair of trousers and a suit. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying wear something, wear something like jeans if you're a guy, you know. Maybe even joggies, but definitely don't be sitting there far too comfortable because you will literally just slouch and slouch and slouch. And the psychology behind it tells you that that's your sweats. That's what you do when you're chilling. Mm. So, and and you'll get the benefits that, I mean, you sit here and you can wear your work uniform if you really want to. Yeah, but yeah. when I go into the, when I go back into the room where I eat, I mean, we don't have a big kitchen here, but when I go back into the room where I eat, I'll change into my sweats and my shorts and my vest. And that's me chill time. Hmm. And just something like that, mate, will go a long way to keep people motivated because um, just thinking that, you know, the, the, when you wear the same clothes all throughout the day and do the same things in the same room, hmm. then you're trying to work out in that room. Psychologically, the mind will not help you. Yeah. So th- those are my biggest things that, that, I, that I do. Um, I make sure I'm sitting upright. Don't bring the laptop into bed with you. Don't yeah. put the laptop on the couch while you lie, while you lie horizontally. You're setting yourself up to failure. Yeah, so yeah. you have to you have to be you know diligent with these things, uh, and you know get yourself out for a walk. I think again another one we said about it with cooking meals. We're now walking more than ever. I've never seen people run five k's. I've never mm. seen people hit their step target as much as they are now. Mm. Another variable that we're we're all on board with, which is great. You yeah. know, a big message to take from all of this is that out of all the only few things the government is allowing, and one of them is exercise. Yeah. So that, that, that should speak to a lot of people's minds and be like, do you know something after this? If the government are saying that of two other things, go shopping, you know, don't go anywhere else apart from your family that's in your household and exercise. You know, that says a lot. So I think motivation-wise, in order to pick yourself up, do those wee tricks, change your clothes, uh, plan your breaks, you know, if that means getting out, walk the dog, uh, take in podcasts like this. You know, I, mm. can't, I can't stress how much... Like, see, see to me, when I, when I flipped my self-development sort of structure, podcasts are like gold dust. They're free. They're yeah. genuinely free from fitness professionals, mindset coaches, psych, psych, psychologists. The smartest people in the world are literally there at your fingertips and your ears. Yeah. You know, TED Talks, all the rest of it. So, consu- you know, I, w- I would always say, and you, you'll see from my page, mate, I consume. Sorry, I, I, pre- I create a lot a lot more than I consume. I hardly consume much. Yeah. You know, I'll flick through, I'll, I'll follow fellow PTs so I can see the target market, see where people are at. I'll mm-hmm. follow a, a certain amount of, you know, fat loss clients so I can start relating to them and seeing their problems. Mm-hmm. But other than that, mate, I'll swipe, I'll swipe, I'll see guys like yourself and I'll be like, right, you know, I'll notice things that you're changing. Notice you changed a wee podcast setup, the video, yeah. things like that. Mm-hmm. It just keeps me in, in, in terms of the market. But other than that, mate, I listen to Phil Graham, I follow Jay Alder and stuff, and I follow guys who have got a million followers because yeah. they're ridiculously smart. Yeah, that's a really good point too. And I think, like, we were having a conversation at dinner last night, and um, the girls were asking me, like, "Oh, like, aren't you going to hate when you get back to work?" Because in my current role, having to drive to pretty much all the gyms, I'm a lot of times just sat in the car driving, and sometimes that's actually the time that I appreciate the most because I just chuck podcasts on. And I'll just put things on that I want to learn about, like whether it's from like Eric Helms, you name it, I'll just chuck it on. Uh, so I think it's a really good point. I don't think people are taking advantage of that right now. I think another really good point you mentioned is, I guess it's not really a point, but just more your perspective. And I think it matches a bit with mine is I've been creating a hell of a lot more stuff than I have been consuming. The only time I really consume stuff is when I'm reading in the day or before I go to bed. Um, I try to not spend too much time on social media unless I'm posting or unless I'm interacting or just being social because that's what social media is. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of just digesting that too much maybe rather than just being proactive and productive. Um, But 
just even the fact that like you've noticed little things because that's all me that's like kind of like me looking at your stuff and looking at other people because I always look at the people that are ahead of me and I kind of go okay what are they doing well and what's working and how can that be implemented to my business and it's kind of like you know just like Nick and I I always worked under under them and I've taken bits and bobs um so yeah I think that's some some pretty good info there I guess just from your perspective so why why do you think mate that you are now creating a lot more is it because you're now no longer sitting in cars and traveling from city to city and county to county? Is that why you're now creating more? Do you feel? Um, yeah, I think it's a mix. I think it's partly because I have more time to focus on things that I was really interested in that I probably, because like, you know, I'm, I'm still working a full-time job. I'm furloughed now, but you know, when we get back to reality, that balance is going to be a lot harder to, well, just to balance in general. Like I won't be able to do what I do now. So that's kind of why I'm trying to set things up so that when I get to that point where we go back to normal, that I'll have options and I can kind of really start weighing up, okay, what is it that I love doing? What is it that I should prioritize? Um, because the reality that's why is, I asked that, mate. Yep. yeah, because the way it's going, I'm kind of just thinking I might just go straight back into PT if I have everything set up the way I want it to, uh, which is why I'm working really hard in the background. Like I, in a, in a crazy way, this, the ISO has been really really good to me and i always say i don't mean this in a in a in like a dickhead way because i know people are struggling and like people are going through shit but for me i've taken it as a very positive moment for me my business and how i want to progress basically which is pretty yeah. much the same thing you've said isn't it um yeah. but yeah so no some some good stuff there anything else you want to add the only thing i was going to ask you actually is off the back of this do you have a lot of clients that are struggling in terms of goal setting like, do you find they're struggling with kind of just setting clear cut goals, maybe even just for a month? Good in this time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mate. I've had a few. I've had, you know, I've, I'd like to think I've got a good a good connection with my clients. It's mm. probably the biggest the biggest factor in my business. Yeah. Uh, however, you know, naturally one or two have buried their head in the sand. Yeah. Um, you know, without going into it too much, I would, you know, I know a lot. I know the circumstances. Yeah. Um, let's just say it's you know, not bad. You know, you've got people who live at home, mm. you've got people who uh, live at home with their parents and let's just say they weren't smashing the gym fully when it was even open. Yeah. You know, and when you, when you cry now that, Oh, I hate this lockdown and you know, when's my gym opening back up? And I feel like going, you hardly even went. And when you did, you done cardio. I'm a yeah. trainer. I know this. So I think, mate, I think a wee element of perspective is in order, you know, like you mentioned, mate, you know, there's a lot of bad going on and you know, there's a lot of people who, like I said in that post, mate, don't feel bad about being productive during this time and really making the most of it. Because, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, for some people, this is a horrible time. But, but in the, in the same foot, unfortunately, there's is a time for people to get together with family, mm. watch their newborn for the next three, four weeks, and you know, people, your toddlers that are doing their first steps. There's a lot of things. So, mm -hmm. you, mate, mate, see if we compare ourselves with, with, with the bad world out there, we'll never be happy. Yeah. So this is a time for you to be happy. So, yeah, mate, I, I just think that I've had a few clients bury their head in the sand. Um, naturally, it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no much. Once you do a few touch points with them, yeah. and you present them with a, you know, something exciting for the next 30 days. And that's advice that I gave on Ant's podcast was, you know, you guys should be, PT should be creating an excitement pipeline for your clients. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're sitting waiting for a leader. So draw up a timetable. You know, fill it with quiz nights, fill it with classes, fill it with one-to-one -one sessions. Just make it exciting for the next 30 days because you, you want something to take them away from this massive cloud that's over them. A thing I do, mate, is I don't talk about it at all to my clients. I don't even say a word about it. Mm -hmm. I just pretend that this is life now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just say, right, right, I'll see you next week with a new timetable. I won't say, all right, we'll see what happens with the news. Not at all, mate. I just yeah. say, this yeah. is life. And mm. I just move on with it. And, you know, you'll, apart from that Corona post, I'll hardly talk about it. I'll just be like, Who, next intake, who's coming on board? I've got this, I've got that. And that's it. Mm. And that's the way I deal with stuff, mate. And, and hopefully that it makes my clients more assured. Defo. Defo. And even just me listening to you, I'm just like, yeah, 100%. Like you're, it's almost like you said you're leading the people forward rather than just thinking, oh, well, whatever. Let's just wait till... You know, we see what Boris says tomorrow or whoever else says tomorrow. It's like, yeah, I get we it. Don't, we can't control Boris. No, we can't. We can't. No. So. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys had some, was it, I don't really follow the news at all, but didn't the girl in Scots just get sacked or something? Did she do yeah, something? Mate, she, she, uh, 
she went to family miles away. Yeah, and, and she told people to stay at home, and then she fucked off, didn't she? She was the chief. She was the chief of telling people to stay in the house. Yeah, and she went and fucked off. Yeah. Oh well, she so, learned her lesson. Awesome. Yeah, man. All right, cool. Um, so next question I had. So this one's more in terms of actual training from home, um, and it's one thing that's kind of come up on a few podcasts. I just thought I'd get your opinion, really, because although I don't want to say you're specialist, you, you do help people kind of cut, lose weight, and transform. You've done a really good job at that. So. I guess, how are you currently going about training people at home at the moment? And what's your opinion on cutting weight and even just looking at building muscle? Because I think there's, uh, on a podcast with Ant, and again, we keep mentioning this fucking guy, Ant. For anybody act, like wondering who this guy is, he's just a guy who works for the biggest fitness provider in the UK. He's like the head of PTs and he's, he's a good lad. Uh, but Ant had a point where he's like, you have a lot of people on this side who are saying you can't lose weight, you can't build muscle, you can't do fuck all at home. And you have people on this side who are like, you can lose weight, you can build muscle. Like, what are you talking about? So I just thought I'd get your opinion. What's your kind of thought process on just cutting, gaining, and just how to train people from home in general? Yep. So training from home, the thoughts I have on it will upset a few people. Uh, it's like an absolute news flash. But mate, you'll know, like like many things, we you know with training and exercise, we overestimate how many calories we burn. Mm. We overestimate how hard it is. We overestimate how well we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, because ten, we tend to get a sweat on. It's quite physical. We can see and feel sore. Mm. Um, you know, that, that's the training aspect. The nutrition aspect, we always over-report, uh, under-report. So, you know, on the nutrition side of it is always yeah. haywire. So that's two, two of the biggest factors of losing fat and building muscle is often quite wrong for a lot of people unless Big you're time. extremely advanced which chances are people listening to this aren't but you know the variables are always off the scale a bit right we're mm -hmm. trying to get better at being more accurate so in terms of training um the people listening your your workouts didn't burn as many calories as you thought it did mm. especially your shoulder upper body workouts where you went in and done clean and press dumbbell side raises some dips you know if you're if you're anything up to two years training experience without a coach or you know even with a coach it didn't burn as many as you thought it did right yeah. so so my thoughts there are what right so what are we up against now right we're up against home workouts which tend to be hit it's going to have to be hit mm -hmm. you know don't get me wrong if you didn't burn many calories doing dumbbells in the gym at home it's probably a lot less so yeah. there's that argument but for me my, my clients are now doing a lot more cardio a lot more hit stuff is it ideal absolutely not and um, we don't want to cre create those um, habits now because I feel as a, as, a, as a fitness industry, we're getting people away from cardio. Yeah. However, it, it's the hand we've been dealt. So if I can set my Apple Watch and yeah, you know, they say that it's wrong, these settings, but they're consistently inaccurate, if you get me. Yeah. So, so it's your watch on you. So even if it's 300, but it's not really right, it's 300 wrong. And then it may be 280 wrong. Yeah. So my point, my point is that um, you're doing a lot more cardio which for some people they need. Why do mm. they need it? Because for a year or two or three years, they've been overeating, under training, under exercising. So what cardio does is make you fitter. It makes you go to a bit more failure than you normally would instead of doing your wee side raises in the gym. Yeah. Yeah, you want, yeah, you want better, better shoulders, but guess what? When you lose that fat, you will see your shoulders better. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people who you know stick to a, a balance of calories because they want to build muscle. You know, then there's the people right in the middle who want to build muscle and lose fat who don't do either. Yeah. So, so right now, I think the, the, the scale is shifting to losing fat. Um, I think unless you're an extremely advanced lifter, you'll build muscle during this time or you're brand new to it. Mm. In which case, if you touch a couple of weights consistently over time with nutrition in point, you'll get newbie gains. Yeah. So building muscle aspect is probably a bit far-fetched. However, retaining it is very, very possible. Mm -hmm. um, you will just start to feel a bit squidgier and less as if you're losing muscle, but really it's just blood flow. You know, the reason that you always feel your shoulders popping more, your legs firmer, is just consistent training, i.e. consistent blood flow. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this situation right now, I have clients who are actually showing more progress than they did before because they were online clients and I never got to see them. You know, they send the odd video of, of an exercise, a final set, so I can see form, great. But otherwise, intensity, they don't get the intensity. Mm. You know, I've got five or six females on my Zoom call who are now, I'm able to see them going to failure, doing burpees, doing dips, doing press-ups. 25 minutes a hit five times a week. 
Yeah. It's not something I would do after this because it's it's not great for the joints, knees, uh, building muscle over time because, you know, the more muscle you've got, the more you can keep fat off. We know that. However, when we talk about right now losing fat, you're doing more cardio, you're burning more calories in a week with this new setup. So you're going to lose more fat. So mm. in my opinion, this is a great thing for a lot of people because they think they, they were gym bunnies before and they thought they burnt a lot of calories. Yeah. They actually never. Yeah. News flash, I'm telling you. It's a good point. And I think it's also a good point what you mentioned about people getting towards the end of their, like, they're going closer to a failure range because maybe they've never really understood what that was. And that's something that we know that, if, especially when you're a beginner, you underestimate, I guess, or probably, sorry, overestimate how difficult you think things are. It takes a lot of practice, right? Like if I had a, a brand new person come to, you know, either of us right now and say, look, fill me your last set and tell me how hard you think that was. I go, oh, that was like a nine out of 10. Meaning they only think they got one rep left. I'm like, well, you could probably pump out another 50. And they're like, really? And then we do it. And they're like, oh yeah, shit. So then you're like, okay, we got to keep practicing. So yeah, that's a good point. And hits naturally going to do that because you're just constantly hammering your body, even if it's just for 30 minutes. Yeah, mate, you can, you can go to failure with mountain climbers safely. Yeah. Yeah, they suck. But when you're on a leg press, you start to worry and panic and then lock it back up, quite rightfully mm. so. However, you do leave some in the tank. Yeah. So yeah, mate, uh, that, that's my thoughts on it. And that's what I've been drumming home to people uh, going forward. And I'm like that to them. Look, imagine you stuck to this intensity, but with added weight training, you would have shape and fat loss. So that's mm. my message. Cool. No, I like that. I spot on. Um, and I think people need to hear that part of it. Because I think, it's like I said, there's a lot of people out there that are saying the opposite. and Again, it's always been that. It's always been that way. We're just hearing it more now because people don't have anything else to do. They just want to fucking talk about it. Um, so cool. All right, mate. Um, one thing we always do on this podcast, we do a flavor of the week segment because we're the fitness burrito and, you know, fits in. Um, usually what I do is I'd always bring up like a journal article or a bit of information and we dissect it and just help people practically apply it because obviously you're on today and you've got some pretty good... Uh, experience with kind of transformations and, and the whole fat loss. Um, I thought I'd just kind of get you to talk through just how you structure it. And I guess just some of the tips maybe that you use with your guys, or even just like from a nutrition perspective, like do you do diet breaks? Do you do refeeds? Things like that. If you could dive into that, I'd be much appreciated. Of course, mate. Yeah. So when I start a client out, um, Obviously, we do the consultation process. We understand a bit of diet history. Mm -hmm. um, I focus less on the top calories. I mean, I'll give a calorie guideline, mm -hmm. um, but I try and get the excitement there from exercise immediately. So okay. first 14 days, um, I will be all over the client. Um, I mean, going forward, I won't be, I won't be messaging them every day, yeah. but I'll be getting videos. I'll be getting feedback. I'll be getting, because mate, see what I think with a lot of trainers is they focus so much on diet. Mm. Now, we all know that diet is, you know, the most important factor and we know that. Yeah. But I, I, when I focused on that with clients, it created even more of a, a burden and a gray cloud. Um, because usually people come, their diet history is usually messed up eating or, you know, yeah problem dieting so when you when a client comes on board and you're like right i need you to be spot on with this diet and you keep reiterating that point they they start to feel that it's the be all and end all and when when they don't stay on point that's when it starts to go in a decline yeah so i mean i don't just say you know crack on let's train but yeah. i give them the calories i give a spreadsheet with drop downs to, to chop and change um you know i structure my week in a way where when I speak to the client, I'm like, look, let's look at your week here. You know, depending on the severity of the goal, but anybody can fit in what I'm about to say. You know, you look at your week and go, right, Wednesday night, you know, mm -hmm. take a look at the recipe guide I gave you. Free roam at night. You know, you save yourself six, 700 calories and go make that um, quite high protein carbonara on the recipe guide. You know, follow one of the pages that you follow and like. Make their recipe. You know, I encourage home cooking a lot, mate, and I, and I put it up on my feed a lot because if you can cook, you can stick to a diet. Yeah. You know, I saw a stat somewhere that, it, like, circa 1987, 74% um, or 75% of the population can't cook or can't cook well. Yeah, you know, and, it, and that's a scary, it's a scary thought, mate. Aye, of course. 
So, you know, people talk about bland chicken and rice. The truth is people don't know what else to do. You know, yeah. they're like, they just don't know how to cook things. They'll happily just, and then what they end up doing in order to stick to their calories is just pour hot water over things like noodles and shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Instant so, but, but it's, and... Yeah, but, you know, if I can encourage a bit of home cooking, I'll do that. You know, I get a lot of people saying, oh, what's the recipe for this? Brilliant. That's a win. But if you do that on a Wednesday, and then let's say Saturday you go, uh, you know, have some dinner with your folks, whether it's a steak, vegetables, pick a carb sauce, then Sunday, Sunday dinner. Like, we mm. all know we love a Sunday dinner. Imagine yeah. imagine that as a setup in your week, eight weeks to your holiday. Then we get to seven, we get to six, we review the progress, and we go, right, how's your meals through the day? Are we tidying things up? Um, get them to get them to build. By that point, I'll get them to show me a diet plan of their day over three days. So essentially what they are doing is making their own diet plan. Cool. They're learning, they're looking and seeing what's in foods. Mm -hmm. And very subtly, I'll be making them make their own diet plan in the background while I'm like, right, did you go to the gym today? How's your steps? How did you feel after it? Right, was that difficult? Do we need to tweak anything? And I, I almost just, I, I subtly put diet in the back burner is a lot less than uh, actual trainers do because they, I feel they talk about it too much and they put such a big, big burden on it that it yep. almost scares the client away. Do you find you so make them would, autonomous then? You try to make them autonomous with their diet as they progress through? Yeah, mate. Yep. That's so that good. eventually they, they can cook, they can make their own diet plan. You know, I've got a spreadsheet that it doesn't scare them away with fancy spreadsheets. It's just, right, here's all the sources. Um, over the week, follow it. Right, okay. Now I want you to do three days for me. I want you to do three days in your work. Make, because typically we eat the same breakfast. Yeah. We, we swap a couple of lunches about. And then dinner, I want you making dinner. I want you getting excited about dinner and having some freedom with it. Mm. Um, because essentially, mate, if you can if you can have full free reign at night time, I mean, obviously calorie controlled, six, seven, eight. But if you can make your own food in that time, keeps the family happy, keeps the partner who isn't dieting happy. Yeah. And it's just a win overall, mate. So I encourage the cooking. Um, I would get people just to watch like Jamie Oliver and just – you know, a lot of his stuff, he is very, he's calorie conscious now. He puts okay. a lot of his stuff out. And most of my pies and stuff that like I make is Jamie Oliver, mate. Yeah. Uh, I, bung, I, I bung it up. It's like five ingredients, okay. you know, and it just goes out there. It might not be, you know, 90 gram of protein per serving, but it's enough, you know, mm. and then over the grand scheme of things, you can work a week like that. So for anybody listening and, you know, the recommendation for a transformation is get a nice schedule to the week, do a week that looks good. Uh, don't focus on every day hitting your calories and tracking just you know get a ballpark at the start mm -hmm. if you're new to this and you went from one extreme to another i.e eating shit and uh, not exercising when you go back to a bit of structure and a bit of training a bit of accountability you'll lose anyway yeah you will so don't try you will lose anyway so just wait for the next check-in pictures look for the progress allow your coach to show you that progress and then just see that in there i would rather keep sunday dinners in uh, Wednesday night out, uh, Wednesday night making something at home, off mm -hmm. plan, uh, Saturday night with a partner, you know, bit of a control about it, but not not crazy. Imagine that for eight weeks, that's very doable. Yeah. And then on the last two weeks, you just go, right, let's, um, let's tidy up the Wednesday night meal. Let's, if we really want to push this, let's forget about the Saturday, let's do another homemade meal on the Saturday. That is it, mate. I'm not doing anything that's, that's secret here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just adherent, it's just adherence to your calories but also being a bit, a bit self-sufficient um, with it and cooking. You know, mm. clients need to encourage, PTs need to encourage their clients to cook. They need to. It's just, a, it'll help massively. Yeah, and they'll build a better relationship with food. That's essentially what you're doing. And I think, I mean, the big takeaways for me from what you've said, and, and again, I think adherence being the main one, is you, you, when you started off, you're talking about exercise, and then obviously we quickly went to nutrition, but you mentioned that you just want them to essentially enjoy it by the sounds of it. Like you're all over them. You're talking to them about it. You're, you're checking their structure, their routine. Cause if they don't enjoy doing it, they're gonna, they're not going to do it. Like they're not going to stick to the plan and we need to get them to just exercise so they can hopefully be slightly into a deficit or at least feel better and look better long-term and build the muscle and tone up whatever. Right. And then in terms of the food, I think it's brilliant how you actually get people to build their own diets or I guess build their own days because the be the more they do it, the better they're going to get at it, which means the more sustainable it's going to be. Um, that which was going to lead me to this question is, do you find a lot of your clients when they finish, let's say an eight or, or an eight or a 12 week or whatever kind of week transformation, how do they end up doing afterwards? Like, do you feel like they're well equipped to kind of maintain that? And 
do they mostly kind yeah, of stay mate, on so track? Definitely. I feel that throughout my years, it's definitely an element that lacked. I feel that, um, you know, when someone finishes a transformation, that they, it's like, right, holiday, right, Chris, yeah. see you later. I'm going on my two-week holiday. And then they come back, they maybe don't have money due to the fact they've spent a lot in the holiday. They might rebound. But it's like I said on the podcast with Sky when I had her on, Liz, you know, you've got to, if you've got a 10, eight to 10 week plan, 12 mm. week, you've got to add another four weeks on top of each of it. You know, maybe eight week, add on two weeks. So mm -hmm. I used to always leave a session in the tank for a client after the holiday so that I could get them back in and get speaking to them and be like, right, where's your head at? Are you ready to are you ready to take a diet break? Are we ready to go back to the maintenance, being the maintenance you're at right now, not yep. the previous maintenance? And let's build it back up. And I mean, I make a massive message these days about growing. So after your first diet phase, I literally say to someone, and when they want to diet again, I go, look, you'll look the same. You want to look the exact same? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I don't want to look the same. So we <laughs> need a bit of time to go and grow. It's time mm -hmm. to actually spend a bit of time, you know, eventually avoid the word surplus to females anyway, but you know, it's, yeah, a, bit, yeah. it's a time to grow. So then I'll change the metrics of what we're looking for, mate. I won't, I won't ask for pictures every week or every two weeks. It might be every four. I'll ask for the final set on your deadlift, final mm -hmm. set on your leg press, squat, uh, and celebrate strength at that point. Because yeah. it just distracts them away from the check-in pictures. And if you're a trainer that keeps going, no, let's get more, um, you might have an, an, another agenda in your, in your mind that you're not sure of. Mm. But change the metrics and just be like, right, let's go strong now. Because as a trainer, that you know, it doesn't matter what happens, you want an outcome for your client. Yeah. So if you've got a video of your client, you know, deadlifting 50 kilo at the start and they're now deadlifting 80 for reps, mm. that's a transformation. Big time. It's just not a physical one. It's it's there. So as a coach, it's, think of yourself, right, new client, let's get them looking and feeling better. Let's prove it. Okay, mid-client, she's been there a while. Let's get her eating a bit more food, allowing for some flexibility and getting stronger. Hmm. Because a lot of trainers just keep going around that vicious circle and the client gets a bit confused. Um, the trainer does their best to try and show them stuff. But truth be told, they're still looking at that picture before they stepped up when they stepped off that plane. Yeah. And how lean they were. Yeah. So you need to you need to distract them, but not really distract them, just show them another avenue. And when you do that, you're almost like stopping people from crazy dieting and all round circles all the time. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Just quickly on diet breaks and stuff. How do you usually implement a diet break personally when you're using it with clients? I'll gauge it for the person, mate. Again, I'll look for red flags. Mm -hmm. I would um for people listening who have considered a diet break. It's massively crucial. You know, the body stops. When you first get a training plan and a nutrition plan, the first yeah. two weeks you go to town on it, you're very accurate. Yeah. You stop with the big heavy sauces. You mm. push those extra two reps. So it's that whole accuracy thing. Uh, and then over time, the training plan goes a bit stale. Uh, the nutrition starts to become lackluster. So you might be two, 300 over every day. Yeah. So in my opinion, you you need it. It's not even a question yeah. because you're not a robot. You're literally not a robot who can continue to do the same stuff all the time yeah. uh, and you'll crash and burn badly. So yep, you need them. Uh, I implement them with clients when I start noticing some red flags. They don't know it, but I notice them. Hmm. Uh, things like reflecting on pictures and wishing they looked like that. Um, you know, think maybe being burnt out. You mm. know, the, the, the training plan, the logbook isn't going anywhere because you're not, you need a break. Uh, yeah. And just assessing life, mate, realigning is a big one. I always, if I can look for red flags, it's took me some years to get used to that, but mm. realign the client. If you can see some red flags, if you can see progress starting to stall, like I said, don't be scared to say to your client, look, we're going to bump the calories back up a bit. Why? Yeah. Because I want you to get strong as fuck. Like, yeah. That's what I do. I've yeah. got a team of girls here and I want every one of them deadlifting over 80 kilo. It creates that bit of competition yeah. without being too, you know, a bit of a thingy about it. But mm. yeah, just realign the client and just be like, look, diet break. Here's here's how we're realigning. This is what we're going to focus on. Because bear, bear in mind, you're not going to be in a bikini soon. It's coming up to, you know, it's a time of the year where you don't have anything on. Why are we dieting? Yeah. Um, but but in, in, in the same sense, show them the end point. Show them why you're getting stronger. Yeah. Um, and Explain you can do it. You can do it yeah, mate, explain it. Sure. But this is where it goes back to the point I mentioned about lockdown with your clients right now. Create an ex excitement pipeline. Let's mm. go right the next 90 days. So for 60 days, we're going to try a wee bit more calories here. 
but don't worry, it's fun. So we'll stick to your basic 2000. Then what we're going to do post-workout is we're going to work on playing about with the sugars a wee bit. So I want you to have two Rice Krispie squares post-workout, post-deadlift and yeah. post-heavy back day. Love a Rice And you're not food. going, yeah, mate, but you're not going, Here, here's more calories to a female who's just finally got feeling good about herself. Mm. So you need, to, you need to be clear with the communication, but understand that if you don't do what I've just mentioned there, you all look the same all the time. Not mm. only that, you won't even look the same because the first stuff that worked for you, uh, the body's probably adapted slightly. There's yep. an ad- adaptation there. So you do need to keep guessing. You need a break and then boost again. That's nice. Opinion, man. No, that's really good. And I guess for anybody out there, like, again, if you're a coach or PT or someone who's just at home wondering, like, what the hell is a diet break? This is something that I've been reading a lot up on in the last kind of two, three months. And basically a diet break is a period where you're going to increase your calories back up to a maintenance level, potentially even a surplus level uh, for anywhere for a week, two weeks plus if you needed to. And the reason you would do that is because like Chris mentioned, when you're dieting for a long period of time, your body's going to start adapting which means that it might be a little bit harder for you sometimes to lose weight psychologically too. Like to Chris's point, like, fuck, you can't just diet all the time. Like it's mentally difficult and it's going to stress the body. So just having a week or two off where you pump those calories back up and then next thing you know, your body's starting to recover. It's starting to kind of auto-regulate itself. And then you go, you know what? Cool. Now I'm good to go. Let's go back into a bit of a diet of two to three, four, whatever weeks. Um, and just to finish off on that is there's, you know, there's, been journals and you know studies done that show people that have a more flexible approach and add in whether it's a refeed or diet break they actually lose more weight long term and keep the weight off versus the people that have a crazy rigid diet who lose the weight put it all on and then some so yeah if that doesn't sell it i don't know what will um but yeah that's that's great mate i really appreciate that um so that pretty much concludes all the questions i always finish off with a bit of a quick fire on just because why not and it's always kind of cool to see what you're going to say so for this quick fire round just try to think about whatever comes off the top first mate um and yeah and then we'll we'll just kind of do a bit of an outro and then we're good so first question is go to holiday destination i feel like you're on holiday quite a bit normally so where yeah we- i would say go to if you want to put a gun behind my back i would have to say spain Spain, nice. Yeah, is that that's Lanzarote? That's where you're going next, right? Lanzarote, Tenerife. I mean, these places are just simple. A couple of hours away. Yeah. They're basically Brit. They're basically Britain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I've the been food's to Vegas nice. and all that. Yeah, mate. The food is what it is. It's just, yeah, good question at this current time. I'm, yeah, I've got like travel in my mind. Nice, nice. Yeah, mate. I think we all do. Um, all right. Question number two. What's your go-to one RM track if you're going for a big sesh? Go to a one RM trying to tiny, uh, Timmy Trumpet. Nice. Freaks. Nice. Yeah, cool. it's pretty it's pretty mayhem. Good, good. All get, right. Get you done get you done to that. I'll have to put it on next. I'll have to put it on next when you're done. When we're done, anyways, put on the old Alexa. Um all right. What's the go to meal? Go to meal Chinese. Really? Uh, salt salt and chili chicken. Um, <laughs> salt and chili chips and just fried rice, curry sauce. Nice. Nice, I like yeah, that. Yeah, hardly, hardly exotic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's all right, man. You can't, you can't go wrong with a good Chinese, man. Especially when yeah. you say salt and pepper chicken. Is that what you said? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, mouth's watering already. We all know oh, what Chris man. is going for as soon as ISO is done. An absolute sodium nightmare. Yeah. Uh, if you could get sponsored <laughs> by uh, any fitness brand right now, who do you want? Obviously, you know we're pretty big. We're a pretty big deal, so I might be able to pull some strings for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, May it would have to be Jim Shot. Nice. It's have to be Gymshark. They've got good values. I think they've got a various, a big broad spectrum. They're not just uh, influencer I think uh, yeah, there's yeah, a bigger yeah. a bigger part of it, mate. But I'm not really into all those brands and stuff, mate. I'm a, uh, uh, but I do like the Gymshark uh, range. So yeah, mate, probably them because it means free clothes, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there's decent clothes. Um, yeah. I was looking at your shirt earlier. I wasn't really sure what it was. Is that? What's that? Oh, that's just a, the ones I made. Oh, nice. Breeze. Yep, cool. Just nice. a rebranding one I made. Hi. Oh, nice little plug for you there. No big deal. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> what's your go-to pair of casual shoes? Casual shoes? Uh, it's got to be Nike. Like, you mean fitness shoes like that? No, Nike just go-to. Or... Just cash shoes. What are you rocking? Oh, I'm liking Yeezys. Are Yeezys you? Are You're good. the second guy who's dropped the Yeezys. Yeah, mate. 
I'm liking Yeezys. They're so comfortable. It feels like your feet are in pillows. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, mate. I'm gonna go Yeezys. I'm gonna go Yeezys. Nice, nice. And then we'll finish off on this one. What's your uh, go-to recommended book for anybody out there? Recommended book. I'm reading uh, the Shrink and the Sage. Is pretty pretty good. You need a break. You need a reading break from that because it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it scrambles the brain. But uh, yeah, for anybody listening, it's, it's basically just the shrinks version of the story and then okay. the sages version of the story. Uh, and the two the two realms of it is just mind blown. So yeah, hundred percent recommend that. I'm also reading the four minute. Is it the four day, four hour work week? Four hour yeah. work week. Which yeah. has started pretty well, so I'll nice. let you know. I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, I've got I've got that book too. I think I read about halfway through that, um, and then I started buying a bunch of fucking courses because I was motivated to work four hour work week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's a good book. Awesome, mate. Well, listen, that's uh, that pretty much concludes uh, episode. I think eight or nine of Fitness Burrito. So thanks again to uh, Chris Chris Bradley for coming on. Um, I'll let you kind of tell the people in a second where you can be found and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's usually found under the Glasgow PT. So Chris, where can people find you? What do you got going on? Um, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So just the Glasgow PT on Instagram uh, and Facebook. And you'll see when you got in the page what I've got going on. There's a yeah. lot happening right now. Uh, nice. But yeah, there should be a bunch of content to take in there. For people who want to you know, sit back and watch some valuable YouTube videos, jump on the Glasgow PT there. Uh, and you know, I spent a good bit of money on getting filmed the business seminar and stuff like that for PTs. Mm. But yeah, other than that, just dig through the page and you know, save some videos that you think is going to help you, especially when it comes to self doubt, um, mindset, and stuff like that. There should hopefully be a few nuggets in there, especially from some of the top guys in the industry. Yeah, defo. And I think again, I know we've pretty much just kind of formally met today, but I've been looking at your stuff for for the last couple of months. And yeah, the stuff he puts out guys is, is spot on and his results speak uh, for himself, for themselves really. So yeah, mate, really appreciate that. As always, I'm Dan Q, a uh, guy behind uh, the fitness burrito, Avante performance. So A B A N T E again, just go check that out Insta uh, and all that kind of stuff guys. But yeah, Chris, appreciate that mate. I'm just going to stop this now.